Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah Wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Amma ba'd Dear listeners and viewers Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh This is Abdul Karim Carl Franklin And I just want to welcome you to part 2 of this Overview of Islam And this is the, sec the second section Practicing Islam Now what I mean here is uh, in this section we're going to focus on what Islam is as it relates to your practice of it Okay, so let's get right into it uh, My apologies, the last video went on way too long So inshallah we'll try to be brief in this video Okay The Islamic religion, okay The Islamic religion as a whole is composed of three levels And each level has its own pillars Which we will explain in the coming slides Bidnillah inshallah God willing. Okay, the first level the first level is Islam. The second level is Iman. And the third and the highest level is Ihsan. And we will discuss what all of these are, what do these mean, what does it mean for you? Next slide. Islam. What is Islam? When we say Islam meaning Regarding the level of the religion of Islam, it refers to the outwardly and the apparent actions. Okay, your prayer, your making hajj, um, uh, removing harmful things from the path. Okay, the apparent actions. Adherents are referred to as Muslims. So those who practice Islam, those who attain this level of the religion, and this is the basic level of the religion. Those who attain this level are called Muslims. But only if they combine this level with the next level, which is Iman. So meaning, a true Muslim is one who not only does the actions of Islam, but believes in that which Islam commands him to believe in. Whereas a munafiq, a hypocrite, is one who displays the outwardly actions of Islam, yet deep down in his heart, he disbelieves in Allah, and disbelieves in that which Allah has sent, and he disbelieves in one or more of the pillars of Iman. Okay, so Islam has five pillars. Okay, so you probably noticed already, but Islam has five pillars, and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about them briefly in this presentation. However, we will cover we will cover uh, cover excuse me each of these pillars in more detail in the coming talks and presentations, inshallah. Okay, so the five pillars of Islam. The first pillar is the Shahada or the two Shahadas. In Arabic, they say shahadatain, the two shahadas, because you have, you have the first shahada, which is ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and you have the second shahada, which is ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. So the first shahada to testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, which is ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and the second that you testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. These are two shahadas, however, this comprises of one pillar, and it is the most important pillar, and it is the pillar in which the whole entire religion revolves around. One enters into the religion by pronouncing this shahada and believing in it, saying it with conviction. Okay? One does this, he enters into the fold of Islam. His blood, his honor, and his wealth are protected from the Muslims. The second pillar is a salah prayer. These are the five daily prayers in their prescribed times, performed in their prescribed manner. Not just any prayer, but the five daily prayers in their prescribed times and performed in their prescribed manners. This is the second pillar and the most important pillar after the shahada, or the two shahadas. Uh, this is the pillar in which the Muslim must do, perform every day, five times a day, and he must remain steadfast upon performing these prayers. Uh, the most prevalent of opinions is that the person who leaves off these prayers has left the fold of Islam, even if he pronounces the shahada. So these first two, number one and two, are essentials. You have to come with these. The third pillar is zakah. And this is the annual payment and distribution of specific forms of wealth to the poor and the needy and other than them who are entitled or who qualify for this charitable entitlement. 
I underlined the word entitlement because that's what it is. Zakat is an entitlement for the people who deserve it. So if you withhold zakat, if one does not pay the zakat, he is oppressing these people by withholding their entitlement from them. The fourth pillar of Islam is fasting, a psalm, fasting. The intent behind which is fasting the month of Ramadan, which is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, which is based on the lunar calendar. And it entails that one had the intention to worship Allah by refraining from food, drink, and sexual relations with their spouse and other things which are considered uh, that which break the fast and you refrain from that from dawn to dusk from the break of dawn to the setting of the sun the fifth and final pillar of Islam is Hajj which is the pilgrimage to Mecca where you undertake specific rituals at the Masjid al-Haram which is the Grand Mosque in Mecca and uh, its surrounding areas meaning uh, Arafah Muzdalifah and Mina Okay, you will learn about this inshallah in upcoming lectures The second level of the religion is Iman which means belief or faith This refers to the part of the religion dealing with inward belief and creed Okay, it is the outline of the Islamic creed This is the first time I'm going to emphasize this and I'm going to emphasize it again it is the outline of the Islamic creed. So if someone were to ask, or you maybe yourself, you ask, what's the Islamic creed? What do Muslims believe? Okay, it are, It's these six pillars of belief. So the inherent, the one who adheres to Iman, the adherent, is called a mu'min or a believer. Islam without Iman is hypocrisy or nifaq. We discussed that. The person who does the outward actions of Islam and doesn't have any care in the world for believing these pillars of Iman, whether he disbelieves in them, he is a munafiq, a, dis, uh, a, 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 a hypocrite. He's worse than a believer who just comes out and says, you know, I'm not a Muslim, I don't believe. Allah has informed us that the munafiqeen, that the hypocrites, are fi darkil asfari min nar in the lowest depths of the hellfire. And we seek refuge in Allah from hypocrisy. Every believer is a Muslim. So everyone who, uh, who actualizes this level of the religion is a Muslim in the true sense. However, not every Muslim is yet a believer. Meaning those who have just entered Islam, for example, out of fear or desire, uh, desire worldly pleasures, maybe to marry someone. We don't say he's a mu'min. We don't say he's a believer until Iman enters his heart. Now, when Iman enters his heart, and only Allah knows whether Iman in the true sense will enter a person's heart. And that's why we say, you know, we say, yes, I'm a Muslim, but am I a believer? I ask that Allah accept for me my belief, and inshallah, I am a believer. Um, so that's why no one says, you know, yes, I'm a believer. Unless, by the way of that, he intends, yes, Allah has commended me to believe in these six pillars of Iman. And I have believed in them. So in that, from that aspect, yes, I'm a believer. But am I a believer in the true sense? Meaning I've attained this level of the religion and Allah has accepted it from me. I say, inshallah, I hope so. Okay, so the pillars of Iman are six. They are belief in Allah and tu'mina billah. That you believe in Allah. Meaning you believe in His oneness. Tawheed. You believe in His oneness. And you believe in his oneness and perfection in lordship, meaning that which pertains to his actions, creating, sustaining, owning, giving life, giving death. You single out Allah in that. Also, you single out Allah in divinity and worship, meaning you believe that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. So you single out Allah with our acts of worship. Okay, With lordship, we single out Allah in his acts. And in divinity and worship, we sing, out, we sing out Allah in our acts. And you also sing out Allah in His beautiful names and attributes. Meaning Allah is the only one to be described with perfection, absolute perfection. To Him belong the most beautiful names. And to Him are the most lofty of attributes. For example, He is Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. Or the most gracious. He is Ar-Rahim, the most merciful. 
He is Al Alim, the, the All Knowing. He is Al Hayy, the Eternal, the Ever Living. To him, possess, he also has the most lofty of attributes. For example, he is one who uh, Allah is one who guides, who yahdi. Okay, Allah guides. He has the attribute of guiding. Allah has the attribute of izza, of of strength and power. The second pillar of is of iman is the belief in the angels. That you believe in the angels. Everything that Allah and His Messenger told us about the angels, we believe in them. The third pillar is that you believe in the revealed scriptures, the books that Allah has sent down. You believe in them in their un uh, in their unadulterated form, not in their corrupted form, but in their unadulterated form. So the to the Torah that Allah sent to Moses and the Gospel that Allah sent to Jesus, peace be upon both of them, we believe in it in their unadulterated forms, not in the forms that they have now, which are corrupted and w which are plagued with additions and and uh, and insertions and whatnot. So you believe in all of the revealed scriptures. The fourth pillar of Iman is that you believe in the prophets and messengers, meaning all of the prophets and messengers that Allah has sent to mankind to guide mankind. You believe in them whether we know their names or we don't know their names. The fifth pillar of Iman is that you believe in the final judgment or the final day of judgment. This is the day which Allah will resurrect all of humanity to actually all of creation, Allah will resurrect them and Allah will judge those whom Allah has tasked with, um, with free will. Allah will judge them based on their deeds and Allah will reward the, the good doers and Allah will punish the disbelievers. And the sixth pillar of Iman is that you believe in the divine decree in Arabic called the Qadr, both the good that results in it and as well as the evil. Okay? And we will touch on these, inshallah, in a new or in a separate uh, presentation. And this is very important, okay? Very, very important. This is the entire Islamic creed summarized. So it's very important and very incumbent that you know these in general and that you focus your time and study these uh, in more detail. Next, okay? Uh, yeah, like we said, an entire series of talks will be devoted to covering these in detail. And one last important point, denial of one or more of the pillars of Iman renders one a disbeliever. So if someone says, you know, I believe in Allah, but you know, the angels, uh, I don't believe in angels. We say no, this person has disbelieved. He has disbelieved. He has left the fold of the religion. He's left the fold of Islam and become a disbeliever. Okay. Even some of these pillars, that if one disbelieves in one aspect of the pillar, then he is a, is a disbeliever. If that aspect is clearly uh, laid out and it is known to him or it is shown to him that this aspect is from the beliefs, from the pillars of belief. So, for example, if someone says, um, you know, I don't believe, I believe in all the prophets except uh, Idris. I don't believe in the prophet Idris, alayhi salam. Wa billah. And we seek refuge of Allah from disbelief in some, in some of the messengers of Allah and belief in others. Allah has criticized this uh, on behalf of the children of Israel, the, the Jews, who they, they, they believe in some messengers and they disbelieve in others. Even the Christians do the same thing. Okay, they disbelieve in some messengers. For example, both of them disbelieve in the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and they only believe in the messengers which they believe in. So, if, even if one disbelieves in one or a certain aspect of these pillars, not just the pillar itself, but the, even an aspect of the pillar, then he becomes a disbeliever. And the final uh, level of the religion is Ihsan, which means proficiency, meaning doing something very well. This is the third and the highest level of the religion. Uh, only the elite amongst the believers reach this level. And... Um, those who reach this level enjoy a special relationship with Allah and ask that Allah give us the tawfiq, give us the success to be from amongst those who reach and actualize this level. But even though that we know that only the elite from amongst the believers reach this level and we have, we, we have, uh, we have uh, optimism 
in the promise of Allah, however we look at ourselves with our deficiencies and we fear for ourselves, we must still strive to reach this level. So it's not an excuse not to strive to reach this level. We've been commanded to strive. We might not make it, but we've been commanded to strive. <clears throat> and if you strive, perhaps Allah will grant you something. Allah will grant that which you strive for. Or at the very least, Allah will look at you and look at your attention and reward you based on your intention. Uh, the inherent of this level is called a muhsin, or one who does something very well. Okay, every muhsin, every muhsin is a mu'min, is a believer. Okay, should be a believer, not a Muslim, but a believer and a Muslim. Yes, every muhsin is a mu'min, a believer and a Muslim. However, not every mu'min is a muhsin. Not everyone who uh, is who reaches the level of iman reaches this level of ihsan, which is the highest of the levels. And ihsan has only one pillar, and it is an ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarah, fa illam takun tarahu, fa innahu yarak. To worship Allah as if you can see Him, and even though you can't see Him, then you know that He indeed sees you. And if you can't worship Allah as if you can see Him, then at least be cognizant that He sees you. So this is of a two it's of a two pronged uh, uh, understanding. First of all, this is one pillar. However, the best of the muhsinin, the best of those who reach this level, are those who worship Allah as if Allah is in front of them. They can see Allah in front of them. Imagine a criminal uh, carrying out his act, and the police is right there in front of him. Okay? His whole demeanor is, he would not do certain things. Okay? Likewise, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلِ الْأَعْلَىٰ And to Allah, the highest of, of magnitudes and examples, the mu'min or the muhsin, whenever he worships Allah as if he can see him, his actions, his demeanor is completely different than the one who doesn't do so. And if the person can't reach that level, then at the very least he knows that Allah sees him. Okay? So this is the best surveillance that you can imagine. Surveillance cameras have blind spots, but Allah Azza wa sees all. He hears all. He knows what a person whispers to himself. And with that, this is the end of the second part. Uh, I asked Allah to make this beneficial for myself and for you. Allah knows best. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. Wallahu alam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.